Adonis, the young lover of Aphrodite, had been tragically killed. The goddess of the powerless love watched the arrival of Hermes, who was there to guide Adonis' soul into the kingdom of Hades. In the underworld, Queen Persephone was anxiously awaiting the arrival of the world's most beautiful man, for whom she felt an immense passion generated by the arrow of the god Eros, also known as Cupid. Adonis is welcomed in the underworld by Spectra, who treated him with pomp and circumstance. The youngster was stunned by that reception, because he didn't have any clue about how much he was loved by the queen of the underworld. The Spectra, loyal to Persephone, lodged the boy in a special suite in the royal palace. And while Hades, the underworld's lord, was sleeping, his queen invaded her guest's suite. Finally, just the two of us. You have no idea of how much I've been waiting for this moment. And the beautiful goddess trapped the young boy. But what about Hades, your husband? If you don't tell, I promise I won't as well. Without any way out, he succumbed to the goddess's lust. The sneaky encounters happened daily. Aphrodite was missing her lover immensely and, acting quite impulsively, she decided to go to the kingdom of Hades to rescue her lover. She found Adonis, serving the underworld's gods, and said, I have come for Adonis, and he will come back to the surface with me. How insolent is that? I couldn't care less about what you want. I deeply treasure the services of Adonis. He will never leave the underworld. How dare you come into my domains with such an imperative posture? If he doesn't come back with me, I'll extinguish love from the face of the earth, and among couples there will be only grief and resentment. Hades expelled Aphrodite from his domains, and she walked away, alone and desolated. The love between couples started to decrease all over the world, and the relationship between Zeus and Hera, often troubled, was becoming unbearable. Zeus decided that something had to be done. He gathered Hades, Persephone, and Aphrodite for a meeting and said, This situation cannot continue to be as it is. Hades, I suggest that you divide the possession of Adonis, akin to the agreement you did with the goddess Demeter. He will stay in the underworld for a third of the year, another third will be spent on the surface with Aphrodite, and the youngster will have a third to enjoy the way he wants. Hades didn't like to see Zeus interfering in the matters of his kingdom, but knowing that Adonis was Persephone's preferred servant, he rejected a conflict with his brother and used the following excuse. My brother, I'd do that agreement if it was just up to me, but the young man belongs to my wife, and I believe she will not abdicate of him. Much to Hades' surprise, Persephone said the following. If it is for the collective good, I will allow Adonis to return to the surface, and he will only come back to my husband's kingdom when winter is approaching. Hades staggered couldn't understand the reason why Persephone liberated Adonis without fighting. Spring arrived, and Adonis departed to meet with his lover Aphrodite. But during the summer, the goddess had to abandon him. What Hades didn't predict is that summer is also the season when Persephone leaves the underworld to meet her mother, the goddess Demeter. And during the summer, Adonis and Persephone loved each other without minding being caught by the underworld's god. But the clash between Persephone and Aphrodite remained. They always tried to stretch their stay with Adonis as much as they could. And because of that, on some years the winter appears to be longer, or the summer's warmth tends to persist. <laughs>